Hi, this is Tammy from Casa Mariposa. Welcome to my garden. This is um, a really huge Dutzia growing um, on the side of the garden. It's in full flower right now. We're going to come in um, by the rain garden, which is across from the Dutzia. And I know parts of this video are really shady and parts are really bright. That's pretty much life in my garden. I really love the Dutzia. I love how just big and fluffy and full of flowers it is. Okay, here is the rain garden. There's the Graham Thomas Rose, which is struggling right now a little bit with black spot. I'm very frustrated with that. Here is the rain garden right here. I had to put a little fence up to protect one. some of my uh, zinnia seedlings. One of my dogs was uh, stepping all over them. This area is really, really sunny. It's one of the few super sunny areas in the garden. This area is packed with perennials. Here I have a behemoth nadia that I do not recall planting in the very front of the bed. But I'm going to leave it there because the pollinators love it. I love how sassy it is. I do have a backdrop of um, roses. And there we're looking back towards the gate and the dutzia. This is the dog run that runs along the back of the garden. This area is really dry and shady. I do have the bog garden right there in the back. And I know it seems a little weird to have Phlox and Monarda back there, but they are heavily watered with soaker hoses and they've been there forever, so I'm just going to leave them there. Lots and lots of dry shade that I've learned to um, work with. That's Linaria blooming right there. The other side of the dog run. This area I just redesigned last weekend. I need to mulch it. Um, I was just really unhappy with the way my redesign from last fall turned out, so of course I had to redesign it again. Now this area right here, all of the grass you see is being pulled up in the fall to put in a big pond with a pump and a filter. Hey, there's an idea. Here's a piece of stained glass I just added to the garden the other night. This area is just kind of boring and the beds are shallow and I wanted to add more color and a little bit of art. The spigelia have just started to bloom. I really love those. And I wish my river mist would speed up and grow, grow, grow. Etoile Violette has started to bloom. My garden is a, is a suburban garden. My neighbors are extremely close to my house. But that's okay, I have really fabulous neighbors. More dry shade. This is my founding flowers garden, and across from it is the dogwood garden. If I go along, you'll see the patio where I do have tons of pots. That's my motto, stick it in a pot. And so far, it seems to be working. This area was populated with plants that weren't doing well in other parts of the garden because of all the dry shade, so I moved them over here and they're pretty happy. Here we have just more of the dogwood garden. The um, sweet spire is going to be blooming pretty soon. Pots, pots, pots everywhere. Dogs everywhere. <laughs> Here's more of the container garden. I do have mostly perennials in my containers, but I save a few for annuals like the zinnias and the petunias. There's Abraham Darby in the middle. He just got pruned a little bit. Scepter de Isle, which I had to prune back heavily last fall and rearrange. More pots. More pots. Some California poppies to remind me of California, where I am from. Peppers, and mixed in with a lot of perennials. Here's the dogwood garden. This right here is my Peggy Martin Rose that arrived at my house completely by accident from an online rose company who had a um, system error in their computer and sent me two of these by accident without ordering them. It was one of the best surprises ever. I love this rose. It's very tough, very, very easy to grow. Um, it's virtually thornless, which means I don't have to worry about impaling my neighbors. I bet they like that. All right, again, here's the view into the garden. Quite a bit of that grass will be disappearing this fall. The dogwood garden, the geums, a couple are still blooming. Okay, way too close to the prog viburnum. Super up close with the prog viburnums. Okay, these line the side of my house. They're very utilitarian. They're one of the only 
Evergreen viburnums for cold climates. They provide tons of shelter to the birds. And they keep my house cool in the summer, which I like. All right, more grass. Welcome to suburbia. I am always trying to get rid of more and more and more of it. There's my driveway. Very exciting. Last fall, I added a butterfly garden to the front of my house, and I still have a lot of daffodil foliage that's dying back. I filled this full of coreopsis, milkweed, and salvia, and I've already had quite a bit of wildlife in it. There's the president. Clematis still blooming. The birdhouse is to add a little color. Pipe vine. Just more color everywhere I can put it. This clematis right here is called Baltic, and as you can see, it's taken over a little bit of my mosaic pot. Last year it ate the spirea. It has just started to bloom a teensy little bit. When it's in full bloom, it is amazing. There we go. This is probably the part of my garden that frustrates me the most, and so of course it's right in the front. One happy loripedalum, one half dead loripedalum, and a viburnum that is planted about 15 feet too close to the house. One of my more brilliant uh, landscaping decisions. A beautiful ground cover that was recommended to me by Laurie of My Weeds Are Very Sorry. And here we are right back to where we started. There is the arbor that um, has a cypress vine growing on it. This is the yuck side and it's not nearly as yucky as it used to be. There's the enormous bleeding heart, interplanted with um, uh, lilies that are just starting to pop up. The Big Daddy Rain Barrel, I have five rain barrels, I bet you didn't even notice them. And here we are, right back to where we began, hello Cypress Vine, with the Dutzia, Graham Thomas, the Rain Garden, the Hammock, and of course, a dog. Goodbye, I hope you enjoyed the tour.